My name is Spencer Williams, and today we will look into the life of theater and film director Peter Brook. Peter Stephen Paul Brook was born in London in 1925. As a child, Brook had distaste for formal education, but a love of learning. Brook performed his own four-hour version of Shakespeare's Hamlet at the age of seven. At 21, he did his first production of Shakespeare's Love's Labor's Lost at the Stratford Theatre. He was already recognized by some as the Golden Boy. He spent the next several years staging acclaimed productions of plays, always seeking innovations and styles which would make his production speak to modern audiences. He directed plays with prominent actors, including Laurence Olivier, Sir John Gilgood, and Paul Schofield in titles such as Titus Andronicus, The Beggar's Opera, The Winter's Tale, and King Lear. Brooke became known for achieving spectacular and new event effects with a moment of classic plays such as hanging an actor upside down from the proscenium arch in a version of Dark of the Moon. Even at the height of his success, Brooke gained a reputation for experimenting and searching for originality. Eventually, in the late 1960s, Brooke abandoned the pressures of commercial theater as he searched for a more pure form of theater. His experimental work was shaped by fundamental questions about drama. What role do words play in theater? Are economic pressures killing theater? What should the relationship between actor and audience be? Do actors and directors have the spirit to make theater? And is theater relevant to a modern society? Brooke famously categorized theater in four ways. These were deadly theater, rough theater, holy theater, and the immediate theater. The deadly theater is commercial drama motivated only by money. It's predictable, formulaic, and unadventurous. Rough theater is a theater of laughter, ideas, and invention, a true representation of the works of Bertolt Brecht. This kind of theater is often appreciated by the masses. The rough theater deals with men's actions because it is down to earth, direct, and it admits wickedness and laughter. The holy theater is a theater of ritual and spiritual exploration, epitomized by the work of Antonin Hattud. Not always hugely successful, but sometimes incredibly powerful. The Holy Theater is able to make the invisible elements in life appear on stage through use of patterns, rhythms, and structure. Lastly, we have the immediate theater. This is the phrase Brooke applied to his own work, describing the challenges faced by modern theater directors. This is what a director could and should do to ensure that they create living, important, worthwhile theater. Brooke's famous production of Marashade is a combination of what Brooke would describe as rough and holy. It is both earthly, immediate, aggressive, yet still contains abstract and ritualistic elements. Brooke has been known to rewrite plays or sections of them to better communicate their meaning. Brooke believes that the most important aspect of drama is that a play is alive. He says that the director must go beyond the words written on the page and search for the meaning of the text buried within the essential living heart of the play. Brooke is known for his willingness to abandon his preconceived vision of a text when he saw that it didn't suit the actors in rehearsal. Brooke was among a select group who in the 1960s virtually invented the concept of the workshop. He believed actors needed more freedom to experiment and explore the subconscious truths of themselves and the text in order to find the crucial hidden meanings within a play. The concept of the workshop was neither a rehearsal nor an acting class. The workshop is a chance to experiment, requiring an openness and freedom for its participants. The workshop doesn't always generate useful material in the same way a rehearsal does, but it always generates ideas. Brooke sought to reinvent seeing theater as a dying art form after deciding make-believe is a necessity in any society. His obsession with the power of images over words had a logical basis. As early as the 1960s, he recognized that people's lives were becoming dominated by images. Photographs, film clips, and television were changing the way people related with the world, and therefore theater had to change to remain relevant to the average person. At the age of 95, the director, Peter Brook, can genuinely be called a living legend with a career that spans over seven decades.